Conservatives have complained for years that social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook are biased against them. And it seems so blatant now with the US elections coming up in November and things ratcheting up the tension. First Twitter, you know, it's once again put a warning label on a tweet from President Donald Trump, a warning label on a tweet in which he warned that if protesters tried to set up an autonomous zone, like a no police zone in Washington, they'd be met by serious force, which seems a quite sensible warning. But Twitter claims that a reasonable use of force, in fact, breaches its code against threatening harm. I mean, for heaven's sake. Well, Facebook hasn't gone completely that nuts, at least not officially. It claims it's politically neutral. But what it says and what some of its staff do, well, that seems to be two quite different things, it seems. Project Veritas has released now film of a sting it did on a company that did moderating of posts for Facebook. Although this company is getting out of that business, but still it was in it when this was, was filmed, fully in it. Now, Project Veritas had a reporter go in with a hidden camera and film moderators actually boasting how they censored posts from Trump supporters, censored people promoting his MAGA slogan, you know, Make America Great Again. Um, it's a very progressive company who's very anti-MAGA. I assume your co-workers were deleting a lot of Trump Nobody likes Trump in this, You don't leave any go, do you? Like, if you see a conservative post, you just get rid of it. Right. right. I don't give no f I'll delete it. Like, even, like, hashtag MAGA or hashtag MAGA 2020. It's political state, though. Yeah, but not for you. No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Deleted. Yeah. So it's like, it's like delete, delete any like positive Trump supporter stuff. But if it makes them look bad, how how many of you are are they take your own stance and say, say we're just deleting whatever all the all the Trump posts? There's only probably like sixteen of us. I don't like believe in and pushing like the left agenda. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's with Facebook. How? Oh, by allowing a lot of stuff that are very far left to be still on the platform. Like, for example, it, it, like racial stuff. Okay. What? You could call me white trash based on me being white, but I can't. But, if you say Asian trash, black trash, brown trash, we gotta delete stuff like that. Isn't that amazing? But I guess it's not actually so surprising with this cancel culture that we've now got. Well, I was joined a short while ago by Stephen Sheeler, who actually headed Facebook in Australia and New Zealand, is now a visiting lecturer at the University of New South Wales and a founder of a global advisory company, The Digital CEO. Stephen Sheeler, thank you so much for your time. The Project Veritas video shows Facebook moderators boasting about censoring posts supporting Donald Trump and then letting material through that attacked him. Um, does any of this surprise you? I mean, Facebook says it's going to review its training and oversight, but is this, uh, is this news to you? Uh, Facebook's a big company with thousands of employees, tens of thousands, and contractors and third parties doing this sorts of content moderation. So I'm not surprised that things happen, things slip through. So this doesn't surprise me in that sense. Um, I think it's... Uh, Facebook, I think, does generally try to be a as neutral as they can, and uh, sometimes they get it wrong, and I think here they're just trying to address that. But then you've got, of course, uh, Twitter that's uh, a little bit more out there and taking on Donald Trump, for instance. Uh, I've never heard Facebook accused of favouring conservatives. It's always been the other way around. Um, why do you think social media platforms tend to be so hostile to Donald Trump? Well, I'm not sure... Uh, your question sort of presupposes that they are. I'm not sure that they are in, in terms of how the, the companies run their businesses. I think there is a, a high degree of attempts at being neutral. Um, you have to think about all the decisions, the thousands of decisions that get made within Facebook, millions literally every day about what to, what to allow uh, on the platform and what not to. And Facebook and Twitter both are on the side, uh, side of allowing everything 
that they possibly can on the platforms because they don't want to be the, you know, the editor of the truth or the the arbiter of the truth. But the reality is that's an impossible task, and particularly at the scale that Twitter and Facebook work at. So, um, you know, they're grappling with that today. I think they're going to continue to grapple with it. I think society is going to grapple with it. I actually don't have easy solutions myself. But I understand how people feel like the tech giants have biases. And, and that's because you know, people have biases. And their leadership, you know, are clearly are not um, uh, not conservative. They're in Silicon Valley. They they're, uh, tend to be more left-leaning. That doesn't mean everybody at those companies is a Democrat or everybody's uh, uh, not a Republican. I'm sure they have Republicans there as well. But if you spend time in Silicon Valley, you'll find it's a very liberal, small L liberal Democratic uh, Party kind of a bastion. And so naturally, those are the folks of those companies. And you know, you, we as humans, we have our biases. And as you all know, everybody watching this, it's not only explicit biases, it's also unspoken, unconscious biases. And when you take those unconscious biases, you try to build algorithms around them, you try to systematize them, but then you spread it over billions of people, billions of pieces, pieces of content. Inevitably, there's going to be um, those biases are going to surface. And I think that's what we're seeing now with uh, what's happening with Facebook and Twitter. Well, it should become even more obvious, I think, uh, with the heightened tensions coming up to the election. Uh, you, you're quite right to, to note that the officially Facebook in particular, Twitter less so, but Facebook in particular is committed to uh, not censoring the, the uh, president, for instance, not slapping warning signs all over his, his posts or anything like that or posts about him. But that's still true that uh, Mark Zuckerberg has come under a lot of fire internally from staff that want him to go down this way. Uh, do you think he'll be able to resist for long? Um, Mark's pretty um, powerful and he's very uh, single-minded and determined, at least my, my, my time I spent with him, that's what I observed. Um, but I think he's in a tough spot here. And, and not, look, I'm not crying for Mark Zuckerberg. I think he's, you know, he's, he's built the, built the situation that he's in and now he's trying to deal with it. But, but the tough spot is that, you know, Facebook's created this platform that is now the, it's kind of the, the town hall. It's the public square for how discussions and conversations happen about all kinds of topics, um, not just politics, but, you know, everything's discussed on Facebook. And so Facebook has to stand in the middle of that and say, well, how do we, what role do we play as the platform? And, uh, this was easy in the past when you were a newspaper or a TV station, and you would we'd work out okay what programs we're going to show, what 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 sh what 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 uh, this program alone, you know what what uh, stories we're going to cover, who are we going to interview, you know what's going to be the angle, what questions are we going to ask. You're making editorial decisions along the way. Now the difference is your programming is is shown to a you know an audience of thousands, and everybody can watch it at the same time. The difference with Facebook is it's shown to audiences of millions, and everybody's watching an individual channel, as it were, that's tailored just for them. And that's the bigger thing that he's grappling with. I think even bigger than that is uh, doing all that at a time when we've got a cancel culture running riot. And uh, keeping your head in that is extremely difficult.